Hello students, welcome to our online video tutorial class. I think you have seen the previous video whatever I have made on the chapter plant kingdom and I have discussed about the introductory part of the chapter plant kingdom. So here actually I am entering the main body of the chapter that is algae or thalophyta. So first of all when we will be start discussing about the algae or thalophyta we have to see the how many types of algae or thalophyta commonly we can see so let's see in the next slide algae are, are commonly unicellular they can be they can be filamentous they can be colonial they can be even multicellular unicellular algae means those algae which are containing single cell only and phytoplankton are the general examples of the unicellular algae Filamentous algae also can be another type of algae where the algae are actually filament like structure or they are actually fiber like structure showing and the cells uh, divide but do not separate causing long strands and the cells of this filamental algae they are not differentiating also. Another category of the algae is there that is the colonial algae keep it in your mind this algae are present in a mass and they are present in a coordinated manner because they are coordinating with each other. And there is another type of the algae category that is a multicellular algae. Uh, in this algae you can say that some differentiation can be found. That is why the multicellular structure has been formed. Next, here you can see the three different types of algae. One is unicellular algae, second one is colonial algae and third one is filamentous algae. In case of unicellular algae you can see the figure also as well as the example of the unicellular algae is Chlamydomonas. You can see here the example of the colonial algae also where the example is volvox you can see the figure and filamentous algae filamentous algae is present that is uh, can be spirogyra or that can be eulothrix also here the diagram of spirogyra given eulothrix is not given going for the next slide in the next slide slide you can see we have discussed we will be discussing about the spore types present in the algae so whatever the type of spores which are responsible for asexual mode of reproduction they, those spores we will be discussing here so let's see whatever the type of spores are commonly present in algae first of all there is a type of spore which is known as zoospore these are the motile spores because they are containing flagella so due to presence of flagella they are known as motile spore next type of the spore that is the aplanospore keep it in your mind these are non motile spore because they are not having flagella they can be also called as non flagellated spore and they are thin world actually next there is another category that is known as hypnospore they are also non motile spore but that is containing thick wall okay like the conidia which is present in case of fungi akinet akinet is a such kind of spore where the division not occurs and entire cell give rise to the new plant so there is no division of this spore and entire the cell uh, it is actually giving birth of the entire plant body so that is known as akinet Next tetraspore, tetraspore is actually the type of spore which is produced by brown algae and these are the non motile spores obviously because they are not having any kind of flagella and they are produced within the tetrasporangium. So tetraspore is a such kind of spore which is produced within the spore sap that is known as tetrasporangium. Next there is another stage is present that is commonly known as palmella stage. What is that? Sometimes the zoo spores that is a motile spore that is not coming outside from the sporangium that means within which spore sac they are actually produced from there they are not coming outside. So they are enclosed in a mucilaginous envelope and divided into small colony of cells and this cell stage is commonly called as palmella stage. So whatever the zoo spore if it will not come outside from the sporangium on that time they are enclosed within the mucilaginous envelope and they are making a small colony of cell from there this cell stage uh, coming out these are called as palmella stage. So this is the palmella stage it is written here. Next comparative study among different classes of thalophyta whatever the comparative study you can see in different classes of thalophyta first one you can see here that is the red algae second one is brown algae and third one is green algae so these are the three different classes of the algae commonly found so red algae also can be called as rhodophyce brown algae also can be called as pheophyce and green algae also can be called as chlorophyce so let's see whatever the differences are present amongst these specific type of algae categories keep it in your mind mind first of all the pigments are written uh, the chlorophyll pigment obviously are present in case of red algae that is chlorophyll a and d brown algae the chlorophyll a and c both are present and in case of green algae chlorophyll a and b both are present 
if you go for the pigment phycobilin that phycobilin pigment is also present in case of rhodophycin and this is composed of two type of pigments one is phycocyanin as well as another one is phycoerythrin so these two type of pigments are actually making the combination of pig, uh, two pigments are uh, making one pigment that is phycobilin brown algae is another kind of pigment where the pigment special carotenoid and fucoxanthin so carotenoid and fucoxanthin those these two type of pigments are present in case of brown algae then that's why the color of the algae is brown due to presence of fucoxanthin next green algae is having beta carotenoid and other type of carotenoids within it as a accessory pigment okay red algae that is the storage food uh, floridian uh, starch keep it in your mind in case of red algae the storage food will be floridian starch in case of co co case of brown algae the storage food will be lipid laminarin and mannitol in case of green algae obviously the stored food will be starch next there is a presence of unicellular to multicellular this red algae will be unicellular to multicellular that means the number of cells brown algae can always will be multicellular green algae can be unicellular or multicellular the both kinds it can happen red algae is always found in the marine habitat brown algae can can be found in marine habitat and green algae can be found in fresh water habitat so this is the overall difference in their habitats also red algae can't move because they are not having any flagella brown algae obviously move uh, movement they can do because they are having flagella green algae they are also showing the movement there because they are having flagella next red algae thylakoid is not in a stacked condition brown algae obviously thylakoid is present in the stacked condition in a group of 1 to 3 next uh, in case of green algae obviously thylakoid is stacked in the group of 2 to 22 so this is overall the total thylakoid stacks present within the red algae brown algae and green algae so this is overall the classification in between a comparative study in between red algae brown algae and green algae i think this specific slide where the various kind of features as well as based on that the comparative study has been done it is very much clear to each and every one next slide you can see here the figures of the algae this is the red algae that is the rhodophycy this is the brown algae or pheophycy and this is the green algae or chlorophycy which is present in the fresh water and these two are commonly present in the marine water so see the figures very clearly so these are the original figures now we will be discussing about the economic importance of the algae whatever the economic importances can be found in case of algae let's see first of all algae is responsible for the co2 fixation that means when the algae is performing the photosynthesis on that time they are absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that means they are responsible for fixation of the carbon dioxide within their body for the photosynthesis process that means they are actually reducing the pollution from the environment increasing dissolved oxygen that also can be done by the algae because algae is performing photosynthesis so as a byproduct of the photosynthesis obviously oxygen will be produced and that oxygen which is produced by the process of photosynthesis that oxygen is dissol dissolved into the water that means the dissolved oxygen concentration it will be also get enhanced by the help of algae primary producer obviously algae are autotrophic mode of nutrition showing organisms that means they can produce their own food by the process of photosynthesis that means they can be the source of food in case of aquatic habitat because all of the organisms who are present in the aquatic habitat they are all present within the food chain and the food chain is starting by this green algae or whatever the type of algae present and that's why they are considered as a primary producer algae can be considered as a food also how so there are some examples as an example porphyra laminaria sargassum these are among 70 different species of marine algae are used as food so these are the actually different types of algae which can be used as a food also chlorenna is another type of algae which is unicellular algae and keep it in your mind that is rich in protein and that protein is used as a food supplement by space travelers that means for the space traveler chlorella is obviously uh, very important algae so here next antibiotic obviously the um, algae is also producing antibiotic chlorelin 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 is the antibiotic which is obtained from the chlorella and that is used as a antibiotic medicine okay agar agar is a such kind of substance which is obtained from the red algae that is gelidium and gracilaria and this is the agar uh, which is obtained from the gelidium and gracilaria and after that this agar is commonly utilized for bacterial culture so always keep it in your mind this agar can be utilized for the bacterial culture medium 
commercial use is also there for the algae first one that is carrageenin is produced from the red algae as well as brown algae which is present that is producing alginic acid or alginate those are commonly used for the commercial purposes so these are overall the uses or the economic importances of the algae you can see in this specific slide i think this entire slide about the economic importance of the algae is very much clear to each and every one now i am just moving for the next point and the next slide rather you can say that is the bryophytes or moss what about the bryophytes or moss first of all in the bryophytes or moss we have to know about their sexual mode of reproduction first of all we know that moss uh, which is aquatic commonly moss are terrestrial organism but aquatic also few can be found that is sphagnum example they are used as a fuel it is absorptive as antiseptic property they have sphagnum is used by the farmers for vegetative propagation purpose and sphagnum in the pool looks like a soil sphagnum is actually growing in which pool the surface of the pool is actually looking like a soil then it is known as quacking box another most important thing about the bryophytes or moss is they are called as amphibian of plant kingdom because they can be present in terrestrial habitat as well as they can survive in the aquatic habitat so for that reason they are commonly known as amphibious of the plant kingdom now we will be discussing about the bryophyte sex organ here you can see the bryophyte sex organ specially in case of bryophyte sex organ the male sex organ is commonly known as antheridium and that is made up of and female sex organ that is archegonium that is commonly known as flask shaped so antheridium which is the male sex organ that is known as or that is containing antheridiophore so here one more thing i want to say or here one thing it is written clear, clearly that antheridium first of all that is producing the male gametes that is known as androcyte from the androcyte the sperms are produced here the sperm is written as well as uh, archegonium that is a female sex organ that is uh, containing the venter this is the venter portion within which the egg is present so egg is written here this sperm and egg when they are fertilizing the, they are forming the diploid zygote keep it in your mind from the antheridium whatever the sperm will be produced that will be passing through the water and it is reaching to the egg and after that only this sperm and egg they are actually fertilizing with each other and forming the diploid zygote so this is overall the sex organs present in the bryophytes next slide you can see here the bryophyte spores those are all homosporous because they are producing only one kind of spore that's why they are known as homospora homosporous same kind of spores they are also showing alternation of generation or metagenesis so how the alternation of generation is starting first of all this is the uh, mosses mosses are having the sex organ that is in case of male sex organ that is antheridium female sex organ that is archegonium antheridium from their sperms are produced uh, obviously from the androcytes and archegonium from their ovum is actually present because ovum is present within the venter this sperm is going towards the ovum through the water flow because in this slide it has been already shown and after that it is forming the zygote there is given number of chromosome containing this zygote will be further developed into sporangium or spore sac that is containing to a number of chromosome that is diploid this sporangium is further producing the capsule that capsule is further producing the spore sac that is also to a in number this spore sac is further producing the spore by the meiosis cell division automatically the chromosome number is getting into haploid this spore will further germinate and forming again the mosses so these mosses and sex organ antheridium archegonium these are all having haploid number of chromosome again when the sporangium will be generated then only the diploid number of chromosome again return that means in their life cycle one is gametophytic generation another one is sporophytic generation both can be found and that is happening or that is found in a alternative manner that's why it is commonly known as alternation of generation next after this slide there there is another slide where we will be discussing about the types of bryophytes commonly we can see three types of bryophytes one is moss itself then liverwort and hornwort so according to our syllabus we will be discussing about the structure of liverwort and mosses hornwort is not there in our syllabus but hornwort is also another category within the bryophytes so first of all we will be start discussing about the structure of liverwort you can see here the entire structure of the liverwort this is the female thallus and this is the male thallus and uh, liverwort is actually the marchensia marchensia is the example of the liverwort so let's see whatever the structure found in case of liverwort liverworts are commonly small green terrestrial plant species that they are commonly found in terrestrial habitat they will not be present in the aquatic habitat the liverwort grow usually in the moist shady habitats such as bank of the stream as well as they are present in the marshy ground 
damp soil they can be also present bark of tree they are also they can be present as well as deep in the wood inside the wood also they can survive or they can grow also so these are the locations where the liverwort can survive plant body is mostly thalloid and they do, they do not have any kind of root stem or leaf structure in their thallus body because their body is entirely thalloid that means their body is not differentiated into root stem and leaves the thallus is dorsiventral and closely associated to the substratum already in the previous figure this figure you have seen this is the thallus portion and that is leaf like this is attached with the substratum properly and this is dorsoventrally flattened that means upper surface lower surface it is totally flattened okay next they have leafy appearance already you have seen in the previous uh, slide they have a leafy, a leafy appearance which is fragmentized into multiple branches and the leafy appearance you can see it is multiple uh, it is uh, fragmentized into branches and the edges of the uh, branches are not properly smooth those are actually rough you can see the edges edges of these specific branches they are exclusively rough no smooth surface is present Female and male thallus both are having rhizoid. Already you have seen these are the rhizoids present. These are and these are the rhizoids present. Female and male thallus, and both are different. Obviously, female thallus and male thallus both are different. In the same plant body, male and female thallus cannot be surviving. Next, female thallus contains the sex organ that is known as archegonium. The, you have seen this one, this archegonium, which is held by a stalk-like structure that is commonly known as archegoniophore. And in case of male, obviously there is a sex organ that is antheridium and that is held by a stalk that is known as archegoniophore. So, first of all, female thallus which contains the sex organ that is archegonium. Archegonium is held by archegoniophore. Already I have told you, it contains the one disc-like structure, disc-like structure and one stalk. So, uh, the stock upper disc like structure that contain 9 rays. If you count here to properly, you can see here 9 rays are present in the upper disc like structure, and this is just only a stock archegoniophore, nothing else. In the next, you can see the male thallus contains a sex organ called antheridium. This is the antheridium part, and the stock portion which is holding is that is antheridiophore. And uh, this sex organ is held by the antheridiophore, already I have told you. Antheridiophore is composed of disc and stock like structure. Again, this uh, disc and stock like structure is present in the antheridiophore. And keep it in your mind what the dis disc is composed of eight lobes, and those all eight lobes are connected with each other. Keep it in your mind the disc is composed of eight lobes, and those all lobes are associated with each other. They are not dissociated or they are not separate from each other. There is also presence of another structure that is known as gamma. Those are small circular or spherical reproductive structures which are born inside the gamma cup. So here you can see these are the specific structures which are commonly known as gamma cup. These are the gamma cups and within the gamma cup gamma is there. Okay, gamma is the reproductive structure. So see the figure here you can understand properly this is the liverwort structure, leaf like structure, dorsoventrally flattened. From the surface of the labor road, this kind of umbrella like structures have originated. This can be archegonium because they are showing the ray like structure. That's why these are archegonium and those are actually hold by a stock like structure that is known as archegoniophore. Antheridiophore and antheridium it is not shown here and these are the small small gamma which are present within the gamma cap. So the gamma caps are actually the cup like structure within which green colored which structures you can see those are known as gamma. Those are small circular reproductive structures. So this is overall about the structure of the liver oat or marchantia. Now we will be entering within the structure of moss. In the moss structure you can see this is the overall structure of the moss. The lower portion is gametophytic uh, portion that is containing leaves that is containing main axis as well as rhizoid and upper portion which is the sporophytic phase that is containing seta and capsule as well as the foot is also another part which is actually con concealed within the uh, leaves. So, First of all, the predominant stage. Predominant stage means before starting the moss generation, the predominant stage of the life cycle of the moss is the gametophytic stage, which is consisting of two stages. One is protonema stage, another one is leafy stage. So, protonema and leafy stage, let's see about the details of, uh, of them. First stage is the more protonema stage, which comes from the spore directly, because that means from the sporophytic plant body directly, this protonema stage has come. This stage is creeping green branched and frequently filamentous stage. That means this is the protonema stage which is containing 
that green colored leaves keep creeping these are also branched and frequently they are containing filaments okay this consists spiderly arranged leaves you have see you can see here spiderly arranged leaves are also present in this stage with a slender axis so there is a main axis of slender axis present they are attached with the soil obviously by the multicellular branched rhizoids so these are the rhizoids by which they are attached with the ground level this stage bears the sex organ that means within the leaves the sex organ remain in confined condition obviously the antheridium and archegonium will be the sex organ and they are present within these leaves inside the leaves vegetative reproduction can happen in mosses and obviously that is happening by the help of fragmentation as well as the budding is happening in case of secondary protonema that means this is a prime protonema stage also there are two types one is primary protonema stage second one is secondary protonema stage so in the secondary protonema stage you can see the budding process in this specific slide you can see that in sexual mode of reproduction the sex organ antheridia and archegonia are produced at the apex of the leafy shoot so you can see here the leafy shoot in the apex portion that antheridium and archegonium these specific structures will be coming okay the sex organs will be forming after fertilization the zygote will be developing because from the antheridium androcytes or sperms will be produced and from the archegonium obviously ovum or egg will be produced and when they will fertilize with each other they will be forming the zygote that zygote will be further developed in the sporophyte stage and that is consisting food seta and capsule that means lower portion whatever the gametophyte you can see this gametophyte is only getting modified or so sorry this gametophyte is only containing the sex organs and those sex organs are producing gametes and when those gametes will be fertilizing with each other then they are producing the next stage and this is the sporophyte stage and keep it in your mind this sporophyte stage is made up of three portions one is foot another one is seta and third one is capsule foot you can't see already because i have told this foot portion remain concealed within the leaves then seta is this stalk like structure and capsule is this one within which the spores are present okay next uh, the sporophyte in moss is more elaborate than the liver obviously this specific sporophyte portion or the length of the sporophyte that is obviously quite more lengthier than the uh, sporophyte of the liver oat the capsule contains spores we all know this capsule is containing the spores next uh, spores are formed after the meiosis so obviously within the spore sacs the spore will be present and by the meiosis cell division the spores will be produced because spore sac is two n number of chromosome containing diploid and spores will be haploid number of chromosome containing that's why mosses have elaborate mechanism of spore dispersal that means after formation of spore also there is an elaborate mechanism present for the dispersal of the spore example of the mosses that is funaria polytricum and sphagnum these are the common type of mosses which can be found here and there so here are some specific actual figure of the mosses i have shown these are the mosses containing the stalk like structures that is a gametophytic and sporophytic stage these are the mosses taken within the hand and these are the mosses which is growing through the surface of the wall okay during the winter season you can uh, sorry during the uh, rainy season you can see the entire the those specific type of walls which are not properly cemented they are get covered by the green layer so that green layer which is getting formed as well as on the side of the roads uh, side of the uh, lens just beside the drain there are uh, some some mass of green colored structure are, are growing and those are commonly known as or those are no actually the mosses okay going for the next this is the last slide under this uh, bryophytes or moss that is eco economic importance of bryophytes you can see here mosses are providing foods to the herbaceous animal that means those kind of herbivorous animals they are getting the foods from the mosses because they are commonly eating the mosses uh, mosses are also providing the food to the birds as well as other animals are also having their foods from the mosses some species of mosses as an example sphagnum they are providing peat and that peat is commonly used as a fuel that means moss can be also used as a fuel sphagnum can be used as a packaging material keep it in your mind that means for transporting any kind of gift pack it can be popped just covered by the sphagnum so that it will absorb the this specific sphagnum layer can uh, heat up uh, actually it is act uh, acting as a shock absorber that means from external any kind of heat it can absorb automatically internal whatever the matter is properly uh, wrapped by this sphagnum that is not getting hampered next sphagnum can be also has the water holding capacity for that also sphagnum has the use because it can be used as a water storage mosses can decompose rocks 
on which it is commonly growing and making the substrates that means very small small rock particles available for the growth of the higher plants. So keep it in your minds of the higher plant growths are actually dependent on this specific type of mosses because mosses are actually decomposing breaking down the rock pa rocky particles into small small materials small small mineral substances and those minerals or rock substances will be absorbed by the higher plants and they are actually growing. And the last economic importance is mosses are forming covering on the soil that is like a mat and that reduce the impact of falling rain and prevent soil erosion. So mosses when they will cover the soil surface like a mat obviously it will reduce the impact of falling rain as well as it will prevent or reduce the soil erosion. So these are the economic importance in all aspects by bryophytes or moss. So up to this slide the moss or the bryophyte is getting finished so in this specific video we have discussed about entirely the thallophyta and bryophyta next video we will be starting from the pteridophyta so up to this specific slide whatever the slides we have studied i think you have understood all of the sites very clearly and i think there is no such query also and the next thing is that i think this video you have enjoyed a lot uh, thank you everyone for seeing this video thank you thanks a lot